Good morning, folks. Another calm day on our star. We're awaiting a coronal hole stream, got news from 750 million light years away, and a few notes from yesterday's National Space Weather event. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding a calm star in 193 angstroms, no flashes, no ejections, not even much in the way of surface surging or coronal field motion. The lack of solar flares has persisted even as a sunspot group crosses the disk. It is now seeing its lead magnetic complexity spread laterally as it turns towards the limb. Solar wind here. Calm density and temperature top and bottom with the solar wind speed in purple on a nice descent. All is calm in Earth's magnetic field at the moment and that should persist until impact from the solar wind from the departing coronal holes. Expected here either tonight or tomorrow. No large magnitude seismicity over the last day. With the top lithospheric news about a mile under the water as a submarine volcano is erupting as we speak. Folks, these seemingly innocuous figures are very, very, very far away. This is a continent-wide radioscope collaboration, and they say these two objects contain 15 billion solar masses between them. They are orbiting each other, making for the largest two objects ever observed in tandem motion in a cosmic system. So the National Space Weather Enterprise Forum. I first want to thank all the observers who came out. It was far more than I imagined. It was an informative event, but also concerning in some ways, particularly how it seemed that government officials, some of them are stuck on level one, learning about solar wind and solar flares. That was not the case, however, for General Vanderham, who kicked off the conference with space weather war stories. There were solo presentations, panel discussions, and I got to chat with a lot of the folks. That's Jeffrey Love and I discussing the solar kill shot. I also thought it'd be fun to walk around the NASA building four or five times. I did ask two public questions. One observer filmed them both. You can see them on Laxer 18's YouTube channel. Folks, we'll discuss the event much more on the website in the coming days, but I wanted to share the thing I heard that I may never forget. When asked about food and water for the people in a major solar storm condition, FEMA's response was that they would not, for example, be trying to take food to every part of Chicago, They'd be evacuating the city to uh, concentration areas where they can more easily manage the burden. Yeah. Now, granted, I think they're forgetting that many people own guns and would refuse to leave their homes, but alas, bit of an interesting admission. And speaking of their plans for such an event, they are really not prepared for anything longer than seven days. And in terms of suppliers of goods in emergency situations, a major concern was expressed over the fact that contractors offer that out to many, many localities, assuming a disaster could never hit them all at the same time. The sun doesn't play that game. Like I said, much more about the event is coming up on the website. We've got weather around the world and up through the atmosphere, followed by shots of our star to close here. We'll do this run again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in D.C. and I can't wait to go home. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.